The Cliff Ellis Show. I'm your host, Dave Acker, here at WMBF Sports, joined with the one and only Cliff Ellis. Coach, start things off. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Feel good. Feel good. Uh, energetic, going down the stretch. Conference tournaments just a couple of weeks away. Got to get this team rocking and rolling in the right direction. We've been banged up a little bit. Been on the road a lot. Trying to get, uh, trying to get up. The league's very good. Uh, we've been very close. Uh, it's not been the season we wanted. Uh, but we, we've got our sights on the conference tournament and trying to finish this thing up the right way. Cool. Really shrink it. When I mean, you look at it in the beginning of the season, it looks so long. Now we look and there's just a couple games yep. left. Yep. Middle we were, of a home stretch here, though, Coach. You're yep. finally back at home. How's that feel? <laughs> Wonderful. We've been on the road long enough. I don't know how many miles we've logged, how many hours we've logged, but it's been a lot. And uh, that leaves us with one road trip left uh, right before the tournament. And uh, it's good to be back home. Coach, Obviously, don't want to reflect too much on a losing streak, but, I mean, last week, I think we talked about you were just a couple baskets away from being one of the best teams in the Sun Belt. Now maybe a couple games out of the standings. How do you, guys, how do you get the guys to just kind of mentally shift and just get ready for the next game? Well, you know, basketball's hard. Life's hard. You know, you've got to be able to get through circumstances like that. You've got to, you got to keep your energy level up. You know, when you get in these situations, uh, your confidence goes down. And the only way you're going to come out of it is to have some success. We're very close to, with our games. If things have just gone a little bit different here and there, we're very close to being not in the first or second place, but third or fourth place. Very easy. But, you know, when you lose some close games the way that we have, uh, then it puts us toward the bottom. Now, we didn't play well last week, but uh, we, we've still got games left. Uh, to, to make ourselves get better. And again, we have to get our focus on the conference tournament. I was just more curious, honestly, myself or your coaching style, maybe even you can talk on other coaches. Some people are so analytically driven anymore. You don't want to make excuses for losses, but in a game, it's happened to you before this season, when ULM, I mean, shoots over 50% from three. Do you almost just chalk those games up? or how, what, what, like? Well, you know, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes, it, it, you know, things just don't work out the way you think things are. For whatever reason, teams have found an extreme way to knock down threes against us. And when I look at the film, I do think that our length is probably a little bit shorter and some guys are getting shots off where they're seeing against other teams a little bit more length against them. But teams have just shot the ball so well against us. And it's really cost us uh, because We've gone in and we've seen teams shoot uh, the three that are 25% three-point shooters. We even had one guy that in the teens uh, go and make 60% of his three. So those are the things you don't count on. And when teams do that, uh, it, it, it puts you in a tough situation. And Coach, some of your players, I mean, still playing really well. Kylan, Josh, Isam, they've all been getting double digits the last few games. They're, they're fighting. Uh, I, I think the one guy that's really started to make a move is DJ Bassey because of his defense. We've had trouble with our ball screen defense, and he's really given us push in that area. So I've been pleased with what he's been able to do. Okay. And then uh, we're going to obviously talk to two of the players here in a little bit. But, Coach, before we go to break, there's one thing off topic that I want to ask you about. Uh, since it's coming up this weekend, a lot of people watch the Super Bowl. Do you have a Super Bowl pick, Chiefs and Eagles? I know it's not basketball, but it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I, I really don't. I know we got a lot of Eagles fans that are in the area. And, uh, you know, I like the Jalen Hurts story because, uh, you know, here's a guy that was the University of Alabama and had to leave because he lost his position, I think, to Tua. Uh, right, yeah. And, and, uh, so he goes to another school, and he, he, he just shows he's a fighter. I love to watch Mahomes play. You know, his dad was a baseball player that I remember, and I love to watch him play. I, but I'm, I'm an underdog guy, so if I had to choose one, I'd choose the Eagles okay. because of Jalen Hurts. And because of all the local, no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> local fans around. Well, no, but th there really is a yeah, big. There is a big Eagles fans here, but I, I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I think it's uh, it, it's always fun. It's it's a premier event. It's kind of like the Final Four in basketball, or the Masters in golf, or the World Series in baseball, or you know, World Cup, right? Soccer, all of the above, and uh, Wimbledon.
one of, if not yeah, the biggest event. I'm going to leave some sport out. <laughs> NHL <laughs> Finals, Stanley Cup, whatever the sport is that I've got to, uh, that hadn't mentioned that. All right. Well, thank you, Coach. We're going to be right back here in a second after a word from our partners. The Cliff Ellis Show is sponsored by Star Backyards Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. Hand cut USDA choice beef. Expertly butchered by Logan's in house professionals and grilled to perfection over mesquite wood fire. Yeah, that's steak done right. Don't want steak? Logan's mesquite flame grilled fresh, never frozen chicken and wild coho salmon are sure to please. Logan's. Fresh food. Cooked to perfection. Just for you. Waccamaw Land and Timber has been serving the Grand Strand since 1982. The ultimate goal of Waccamaw Land and Timber is to achieve the best interests of both the buyer and the seller. We can handle all of your commercial real estate needs. But if you're just looking for a place to relax, hunt, or fish, the professionals at Waccamaw Land and Timber can find you the perfect recreational property as well. Call 843-449-0441 to discuss your real estate needs with Waccamaw Land and Timber. Where's Olivia? Upstairs taking a bath. You think he's cute? He's in two of my classes. Oh, sugar, you're about to have a mess on your hands. Upstairs, you got about 40 gallons of water that's getting ready to destroy your ceilings and your floors. Olivia, tub, now. Geez, that was a close one. Glad to help, honey. But let me tell you, when it comes to those teenage hormones, you are on your own. Trouble doesn't always come with a warning. You can rely on A&I. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Cliff Ellis Show. Coach Cliff, uh, I wanted to... I've gotten some good positive feedback on the last couple episodes that, you know, just getting to know you, obviously something I think people are interested in, uh, plenty of stories to tell. First thing, um, maybe do you have a favorite, favorite childhood memory that, that you might want to share, whether it be basketball related, what drove you into coaching, or just something that popped in your man, mind? First time I saw the, the lights, nine-year-old little league player in Shipley, Florida. I was the only nine-year-old to be able to play Little League, but I had a neighborhood of guys that just kind of helped raise me that were a lot older, and I just had to figure it out. And I played third base, and I got a hit my first time up, but I knew I was hooked. When I got that single, it went in the right field, and a 12-year-old was pitching against me, and it made him so mad, and everybody in the stands was just jumping up and down because I was the youngest guy there, and I got a hit, and I actually, uh, got two fly balls that were hit to me, and so Little League, that's, my, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Wow, awesome. Loved it. Baseball was my first love, really, and, uh, uh, but I loved it all, uh, and, and basketball was, was second, and football was third, golf was fourth. And, I, was say, I think that's a lot, of, a lot of the ways for a lot of people. Yeah, we just, grew, baseball are just we just went from one sport and, to the other. Yeah, yeah, we, was it wasn't travel ball, you know, it was just, uh, you know, kind of like Nick Saban that, you know, he, his daddy was a Gulf, uh, uh, he had a Gulf gas station and he sponsored baseball and everybody went and played. And I think I played, my first team was with Standard Oil. And uh, it's, uh, those were good days. Uh, and it just gave me the confidence. I knew I was hooked, I was hooked. So a little later in life, I believe you've been married to your wife. Is it Carolyn? Am I right? Correct. How, um, how'd you meet her? 
Is that a good story? Or <laughs> Yeah, well, I met her. <laughs> she will tell you the story that she saw me. She was serving punch. Uh, I was at Chipola Junior College. I, I wanted to play basketball. I broke my leg. I didn't play. I didn't. Ended up playing golf. And she, she was at the uh, local high school, and her club was serving the punch. And she said when she saw me, she thought my nose was stuck straight up in there like I thought I was the coolest thing since sliced bread. And I don't remember that, but she tells it all the time. And then uh, we met at a friend of mine, his name was Frank Jorner. He was a very good basketball player, we called him Pete. And one of Carolyn's friends wanted to meet him, so she came over, Carolyn came over with his friend to talk with Pete, and I ended up talking to Carolyn, and we started talking, and I guess she found out that I wasn't as vain as I looked, and we started dating, and the rest is history, and I, she has been, what a wonderful partner. I have just been so blessed. Carolyn is a giver, not a taker. She is, I call her Miss Charity. Uh, she is in every, just about everything that does that helps people. Uh, she's been an elder and a deacon in our church. She's been a woman of the year in this area. She was woman of the year at Auburn. She was one of woman of the year at Clemson. She just, uh, and, and, and she is so supportive. She's very bright, very smart. I don't think she ever made a B in her life. Uh, she used to get me because I'm just, I'm just trying to get a B, you know? <laughs> But uh, she was smart, she was beautiful, uh, charming, and there was just something about her that, I, that really, uh, really, got my, really got me caring about her. And it went on uh, for years. We dated for about five years, and then we got engaged and got married, and we've been together uh, for 54 years. That actually great leads me to my next question. Is, um, with a lot of coaches, I know a lot of people maybe don't like to hear it at the higher levels because you know some coaches can make a lot of money. And But one thing that's been on the college basketball topic is coaches having to move around a lot. It's tough on families. Um, you're talking about like a one, having a wonderful partner. Well, how well, important is that? Well, I mean, that's that? because there's a lot of women that can't do that. They won't do that. You know, they want it settled down. We're, we're kind of like preachers and politicians. We're in, we're out, we're moving. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, you, uh, but she has been there, been supportive of me in every move that I've made. Uh, uh, we've always had discussions. No move has ever been made without her input. And, uh, uh you know, this, this, she's been the love of my life, and I'm very, very thankful, very blessed. And if you really want to see a treat, I promise you, even if you're not a basketball fan, come to a basketball game, and I don't care if you watch the game or not, if you're not a fan, watch her. Yeah, I was going to say, mean, she's... She, uh, this is the person that is so giving and caring and all that, and she, uh, she gets into it, but she really cares about these kids and, and wants them to do well. Awesome. Well, I'm really glad. Well, I'm I glad asked you that. asked that question. I, I don't know what question he's going to ask. I don't want to know uh, because it's impromptu, but I'm glad you asked that question. So, Coach, honestly, really glad I got to, got to ask you that. And we're going to learn a little bit more about you here in a second. But first, we're going to talk to two of the players on the team when we come right back. Where's Olivia? Upstairs taking a bath. You think he's cute? He's in two of my classes. Oh, sugar, you're about to have a mess on your hands. Upstairs, you got about 40 gallons of water that's getting ready to destroy your ceilings and your floors. Olivia, tub, now. Geez, that was a close one. Glad to help, honey. But let me tell you, when it comes to those teenage hormones, you are on your own. Trouble doesn't always come with a warning. You can rely on A&I. &I.
five star backyards, Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. HTC is here to connect you to the things that matter most in your life. With the area's largest fiber optic network, HTC is here with the fastest speeds to help power your day. Do a little multitasking. Keep the peace. All to help your day run smoother than ever before. See how HTC is here to connect you to your world and take advantage of these great offers today. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cliff Ellis Show. Joined here with Marcus Saunders. Marcus, uh, we've been talking about all season long. The team kind of gelling together. We mentioned multiple times. I mean, only three returners. Uh, what was it like having the team kind of just get together and get that gel? And then it seems like you guys hit a stride there. They've hit a lull. Um, but that, I mean, just what it takes to get to get that back here towards. Yeah, the definitely. So, um, like you said, we all pretty much a whole new team come in. So at the beginning of the season, everyone had to come together, learn how everyone plays, and you know that was that's difficult to have. I mean, I think we only have three returners, and then coming in, you know, we had a good stride at the beginning of the season. We hit a little rough patch, but I think we're going to be able to turn this around towards the end of the season. I think we're really all coming together at this point and starting to gel. And, you know, we want to win. We want to win these last games, especially going into the conference tournament. So I think, I think we're coming together good now. Um, so you and Jimmy Nichols, I think, are two of the only local guys. Um, where are you from? Maybe tell the people and, and what brought you back to the coast? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I went to Christian Academy in Myrtle Beach and I'm from the Myrtle Beach area. And Jimmy's from Conway. I knew Jimmy before I came to coast. So I had worked out with him before and stuff through basketball. But um, just coming out of high school, and being able to stay local and stay at home and come play at Coastal was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. And so I was really grateful I was able to come here. Awesome. Uh, having the home games, you, know, you guys are back on a, in a home stretch. Does that help having uh, the local ties and just maybe getting to see friends or family at games? Already? Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, being able to come home, play the home games, you know, see my parents after, see my friends after, it's definitely real cool. And being able to have the fans here definitely helps us out, especially when they pack it out. Um, being in one of the smaller conferences, I mean, you guys, I, I think maybe fans, you know, when you hit a losing streak in any fan base, but it almost doesn't matter. I mean, it all comes down to the conference tournament. What do you guys need to do maybe just to flip that switch or is there a mood in the locker room that always, I mean, there's still, I mean, you guys can still do this. Yeah, definitely. I think it's after this last week, having those tough two road losses at Monroe and um, at Arc State. I think that's what really is pushing our team now that we, we really got to do this now, you know, get back on track before we get into the conference tournaments so this way we can win some games here. Awesome. Um, and then maybe a uh, favorite moment you've had here being playing so far this season. Favorite moment here. Um, it was probably recently uh, here with Coach Ellis. We were at the airport and we ran to the big show, the wrestler at the airport. And it turns out that uh, Coach Ellis actually recruited him to come. It was, I think it was here, it was here to Clemson or Auburn. I think it was to Clemson, but just seeing all the relationships Coach Ellis has with all these people is real cool, and it's that was a cool experience. Awesome. Uh, anything you might want to add that I missed? Awesome. No, sir. All right. Well, thanks again. Thank you. All right, so we're joined here now with Kylan Blackman. Kylan, I've uh, been playing really well down the stretch. I know the team as a whole hasn't, uh, hasn't been hitting your stride like you guys were maybe a month ago, um, but just having these double-digit games, it seems like almost every game for you. Led, uh, I believe, led the team in scoring in the ULM game. Uh, just what that's been like for you on the court? Uh, just like all finally piecing together for me, you know, uh, during like the beginning of the year, uh, I came in, you know, from junior college, and this is a different level, so it was kind of like difficult trying to put everything together, you know, getting the speed of the game and all that, but I've adjusted now and it's coming full circle for me. Uh, playing along with guys like Josh and Isam, obviously they had the rapport already. I know we've probably asked before about gelling with the team, but just uh, there are two other guys, it seems like, I mean, double digits almost every night you guys are getting out there. Um, how you guys are playing together and um, just, I mean, how you guys almost help each other even. 
Uh, those are my guys, and uh, I, I think they feed off my energy since I bring a lot of energy to the team. So I help them get hyped up and everything, and you know, I'm just there for them. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask is, um, obviously, this is usually basketball oriented. Uh, sports fan in general, do you have a, a favorite sport outside of basketball, or what's your favorite hobby when you're when you're not playing? Uh, I do have a favorite sport outside of basketball, it's football. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. My follow-up question: Super Bowl is coming up tomorrow. Do you have a winner, Chiefs and Eagles? Uh, the Eagles gonna win it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going with the Eagles. How come? Uh, AJ Brown, he's from Mississippi. He's uh, the receiver for the Eagles, okay. and uh, Jalen Hurts played for Alabama. That's actually my favorite college football team. Okay. Uh, yeah. Who's your favorite pro team? Uh, I don't have a favorite. I, no? I'm a big Peyton Manning fan though, so he's retired now. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, awesome. All right. Um, so one of the other things too, um, I got to ask Coach a couple. A couple of these um, we've been trying to just you know try to get to know players and coach more outside of just basketball do you have a, a maybe a favorite childhood memory uh, what drove you to basketball or even just one in, in, in general but what made you want to start playing even um, let's see let's see uh, actually during my childhood I was I was like steady on football and that was gonna be my like go-to that was gonna be a main sport I, I would play quarterback and receiver and uh yeah, that's what I wanted to focus on at first. But uh, let's see, a favorite childhood memory. Uh, it had to be winning the Super Bowl. I played Pee Wee League. Yeah, so it had to be winning, uh, had to be winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was pretty fun. All right, awesome. And last thing to wrap things up, do you have uh, maybe a favorite movie you'd recommend to people? Or if you're not a movie person, a book person, it, it could go either way. Yeah, I have a favorite movie, Creed, actually. Yeah, the third one about to come out in March, I think. But like, I watch Creed one and Creed two like repeatedly. Okay, yeah. is that like on the bus when you're getting ready for a game, or on just the, yeah, on the bus, or getting ready for the game? That's my go-to movie right there. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again, man. No Appreciate problem. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll be right back after the break. HDC is here to connect you to the things that matter most in your life. With the area's largest fiber optic network. HTC is here with the fastest speeds to help power your day. Do a little multitasking. Keep the peace. All to help your day run smoother than ever before. See how HTC is here to connect you to your world and take advantage of these great offers today. Another trial, another battle. Where's your strength? Tenacity. What's your history? fighting for my clients in court. But what sustains me now is working with three of the finest individuals I've ever known, my family. There's power in family, power for our clients. Fighting for your rights is my family's business. Britain Law. Hand cut USDA choice beef. Expertly butchered by Logan's in-house professionals and grilled to perfection over muskeet wood fire. Yeah, that's steak done right. Don't want steak? Logan's mesquite flame grilled fresh never frozen chicken and wild coho salmon are sure to please. Logan's, fresh food cooked to perfection just for you. All right, welcome back everybody to the Cliff Ellis Show. We have Coach Cliff Ellis once again. Coach, continuing to just try to get to know you. If you could pick one person 
from history. I guess it could be someone today if you wanted to, but a historical figure to, get, to grab coffee with, pick their brain kind of like we are now, who, who would it be and why? You know, the person that comes to my mind is Montgomery Meggs, who's a relative of mine. Um, and he did so much to help abolish slavery. Uh, he did a lot of things in history. Uh, my great-great-great-grandfather was the first president of the University of Georgia. So my grandmother was a Meggs. And if you check the Meggs lineage, you'll find a lot about history with regards to what the Meggs family did. Uh, Arlington Cemetery uh, is a product of the Meggs family and Montgomery Meggs. Uh, things that happened, uh, you know, some of the, the, the wars against the British uh, uh, when they were trying to invade our country, uh, they did that. And that's my family lineage. My grandmother came from that and she was a Megs, and uh, I would love to go because she didn't talk a lot about that, uh, and, and, and I learned a lot of that from my uncles as I got older, and uh, it's, it's interesting that you, you speak of that. When I went to meet uh, Dr. Benson for the first time and went to his office, I went to I saw a book uh, by Montgomery Meggs, and, and I mean, Dr. Benson's has is full of books, and I saw it, and I said, that's my, that's my cousin. Well, he flipped out, <laughs> and it turned out that he's related to the Meggs. So somewhere down the line, I guess we're cousins. I, I don't know, but the Meggs family, it, it's really interesting to see what all, and I'd love to pick his brain on how he fought the British, how he turned things around, how Arlington Cemetery came about, because he's, we've got the same blood. Wow. So. Very interesting. That's, that's who I would, <clears throat> that's whose brain I would pick. Cool. And you, you know? mentioned the book. That was going to be a question. It was, was a book you might recommend, but yeah, uh, you can't it, say that one now. Uh, is it The Quartermaster? Uh, but it's Montgomery Meggs. If you look up Montgomery Meggs, you'll find a lot about him. And, you know, he comes from the family. Uh, uh, my great-grandfather was Charles uh, Meggs, and that was my grandmother's father. And they were all his, it was, Montgomery was his brother's uh, son. So. All right, so Coach, thank you once again. Final homestand. Yep. We're in the middle of it. Next two games, the 16th, Georgia State and Texas State on the 18th. Uh, we want to see all the fans there, obviously. And thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you again next time.